How's it going everybody? Squeegee Dino Toy here. And today we're going to be taking a look at upgrading our projects to Unity 2019.3.15 F1 to successfully migrate them to Skater XL 1.0. As some of you may already be aware, the release build of Skater XL is using a new Unity version from what we've used in the past. And so if you have any maps on the existing version of Skater XL pre-release that you would like to function fully on 1.0 you will need to follow this guide and upgrade the project so let's go ahead and get started first of all we have a project here this is a little example i have set up and as you can see we are in unity 2018.4.17 f1 current existing build of skater xl v3 is on this version of unity so i can go ahead and close out of that and our first step is actually going to be going to the Unity Download Archive. The link will be in the description or just go to this URL at the Unity website. And we're going to go ahead and select Unity 2019 and scroll down until we find 2019.3.15. This is the version we're looking for. And I can go ahead and download that to my Unity Hub and hit open. I've already gone ahead and done that. Okay, we're over here at our Unity Hub now. And so here's my project upgrade tutorial. I'm just going to go ahead and click on the version and we can go ahead and change it to this newly installed version of Unity. And once we've done that, just open the project, go ahead and hit confirm and it'll take a moment. When Unity asks us if we want to upgrade the project to use database version 2, we can go ahead and hit yes. Okay, so once Unity has completed its process, we will be greeted with this screen here. This is the HD Render Pipeline Wizard. This is a really helpful window. I don't recommend closing it. If you do close it, you can get it back by going to Window, Render Pipeline, HD Render Pipeline Wizard. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and attach this over here to this part of my screen. So this Render Pipeline Wizard is quite useful and it'll go ahead and fix a lot of things for us automatically. As you can see, our scene is invisible, which we do not want. So to fix that, we can go ahead and click this Populate and Reset button. And it doesn't take too long, but it's gone ahead and put our objects back in place, which is nice. Now, as you can see, the lighting is quite a bit messed up, but we'll get to that in a second. Next, we're just going to go ahead and click this Fix All button. That'll just fix a bunch of automated stuff within Unity. Okay, so we're looking a bit better now. And essentially, our project has been successfully upgraded to 1.0. And if that's all you need to watch, then that is great. But I'm going to go ahead and go a little more into depth on a couple quick things that we can go ahead and work on to patch the lighting. So something else we're going to notice here moving forward is that the sky is basically gone. We can go ahead and go to our volume, which is where these this type of information is stored. And the exponential fog is no longer a thing in Unity 2019 really. It still semi supports it, but it's deprecated. And also the procedural sky is no longer really a thing. It is also deprecated and it should show up a little bit, but it's obviously completely broken. So I actually just recommend deleting your original volume settings unless you had a lot of stuff going on with it. You're better off just creating a new one. So we're gonna right click in our hierarchy and we're coming down here to volume and we're going to create a sky and fog volume. That will start us out with a physically based sky. This is essentially the new procedural sky. Uh, it's quite a bit nicer, has a lot more control. And as you can see, we've already made quite a large step towards making our scene look better. So the next thing we can do is we can come over here to our lighting panel and our profile here. You'll notice the lighting panel is different if you're familiar with it. Um, and we're going to click on this profile and we're going to select our new sky and fog volumes. And if you don't know what one you're currently using, we can click on our sky and fog volume in the inspector. And we can just click this profile here and it'll take us right to it and where the asset is stored in our project. And we're just going to drag and drop that over here. And then we're going to set our static lighting sky to the physically based sky that we have equipped. I have auto generate lighting on. I recommend disabling this by default, but we'll just let it finish generating for a moment here. So I'm going to uncheck that now that it's done and we'll just do manual generations from here on out. But as you can see, project is already looking substantially better. Honestly, this is a fairly acceptable looking scene. I'd like to touch very briefly on one final thing before I end out this video. However, in unity 2019, if the 
engine does not detect a post process volume with post processing stack attached to it it will automatically generate one as you can see here your old post processing volume that you used before is most likely broken so we can just go ahead and delete that now there's a couple ways we can do it we can actually attach our post processing to our sky and fog volume or we can create a new one i'm going to opt to create a new post processing volume so we're going to create another volume and this time i'll create a global volume so once I've created a new volume, we can go ahead and create a new profile. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this profile here, and we're going to rename this. I've gone ahead and called that my post processing profile. And we can go ahead and click back on our volume, and we'll rename that as well. And now we can add our post processing overrides. And very quickly, we'll just give you a quick post processing volume preset to work with. And this actually comes recommended from one of the technical artists at Easy Day. So we are going to start by adding an exposure component, and then we're going to also add bloom component, and then we're also going to add ambient occlusion component. So we're gonna start with the exposure component, and what this does is it allows us to control the fixed exposure of the scene. This is a very useful component. This was not something that we had access to in Unity 2018. And it's quite nice to use here in 2019. We can go ahead and look at our camera and see that the scene looks quite good in the viewport. The next thing we'll enable is we'll just turn on our bloom here. So we'll give the intensity and threshold checks and we can bump the intensity up a little bit. Although there's nothing in this particular scene that blooms very much, it is another very nice tool. And as always, you will have to play with these sliders and whatnot yourself a little bit. If you are interested in adding a lens dirt, this is sort of what they've used in DTLA to give that really nice camera lens effect. You can grab a lens dirt smudge texture, and I can go into more depth on that in the future in a different tutorial. And lastly, we'll just go ahead and turn on our screen space ambient occlusion and bump that up a little bit to add a little bit more realism to our shadows. And that is essentially all of the steps that are required to upgrade our scene for Unity 2019. Before I close this tutorial out, I'll give you guys one final tip moving into Skater XL 1.0. We can now have custom map preview images in the map selection menu. And to do that is very simple. So I've taken a quick screenshot of my map here in game, and I'm going ahead and copy this. And you can use any PNG for this process. It doesn't need to be, you know, you, you can use literally any PNG. All we're going to do is we're going to name the PNG the same as our scene. So it's going to be upgrade scene dot PNG. And now once we fire up Skater XL, we will have that as the preview screen for our map. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Feel free to reach out on the Discord and the Map Creation channel on the SXL Discord if you have any further questions. There will be links to everything you need in the description of the video, and look forward to seeing you all in the future.